All right, as a follow-up to working with transformations and radical functions, we're going to look at how the domain and range are affected when you do apply transformations to that basic square root function. So if you're graphing some kind of a function that is of this format here, where you've made changes to the basic y equals square root of x, how do each of those things, right, those four parameters that are involved there, how do each of those parameters change the domain and the range? Now, the way we're going to do that is to use a dynamic graph that allows us to change each of these parameters one at a time and then see how the domain and the range are affected in each case. So there's our basic square root function that we're going to follow and see how it's changed by each of these things. There's some sliders at the bottom here that are going to allow us to make changes to that and cause some different transformations and we'll see which ones affect the domain and the range and which ones don't. Well, first we'll start with this uh, a value, changing the a value, that number outside here. Now this uh, is the transformed function. Right now it's on top of it because we haven't changed any of these. They're just the base values. Now this displays as 1 root 1x, but of course that's the same as just square root of x. Maybe before we do change that, we should just make sure we're okay with what the domain and the range are here for this one. Now this goes off to the right and up the domain is all real numbers greater than or equal to zero and the range is all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. If you had to write it here, let's try using this pen, right? The domain is x is greater than or equal to zero and the range is, well it's quite a zero, uh, and the range is y is greater than or equal to zero, all right? Now it might be hard to see that um, that it's going to cover all the y values here. It's going to cover all the x values and y values to the right and up. To see that, you can change the scale on the on this axis here, and you can see that it's going to cover everything there. All right, covers all the values both directions there. It just depends on the perspective you're looking at it. So if we change this a value here, we'll see what's happening. Uh, we're going to put a point on this curve so we can follow it. There we are. And we're going to follow that point as we make some changes here. Now, if you look at the values on that point, that reflects what we said before. These are always positive values here, but then the function's undefined for negative x values here, right? Only when I'm on this side of this thing, the lowest I can have is that end point at 0, 0 there. So if we follow this, let's put it at 4 just to keep the numbers nice. If we adjust this a value now, you're going to see that that point moves up and down, right? It's transformed, it's expanded or compressed vertically, right? A vertical stretch. But what doesn't happen is um, the domain and the range don't change, right? Because this is still all these values to the right and up. Now even though it's taller, it's still going to cover all the values both ways. We can change the scales like we did before to see that, all right? So this point is still going to be the same thing there, okay? Above and to the right even if we come back to our, come back to down here. Now, that's when the A values are numbers that are positive. If you make them negative, it's a different story here. If you make the A value a negative, you also get a reflection in addition to your stretch. And then you see that all the values here now, um, all those Y values are negative, right? Because all the points that were above are now below. The domain is not changed, it's still to the right. All these values, these x values, are still uh, x is greater than or equal to zero here, right? If we were to write on this again here, the domain is still the same. X is greater than or equal to zero, but the but the range has changed. It's still got an endpoint of zero, so it's still going to be zero over here. But now this is flipped around, right? That reflection causes that inequality sign to flip around. Okay, it's y is less than or equal to zero below the axis now. All right. So that a value affects it when you, it affects the range when you involve a negative. If, a val, if the a value is negative, it's going to change the range. But the a value doesn't change the domain at all, all right? Now there's one case in the middle there is worth taking a second to look at here. If this a value becomes zero, think about what the domain and the range are there, okay? So follow those coordinates of that point. This is just this line, this half line along the positive x-axis, the range there is zero. There's only one value in the range, zero. The point's always zero. If you have zero square root of x, 
y values are always zero no matter what the x values are. Domain is still the same, but now the range would be just y equals zero. All right. Now if we change this b value to something that is uh, a positive number, here you see that that causes that horizontal stretch. This does not change the domain of the range either. You know, all these values here are all going to be all the positive values above and to the right. What is going to change is that if we uh, flip this over to the other side here. Now, now if we're going to look at what happens here on this side, when this number is negative, right, when you, have a, when you have a negative number here, right, that, that has changed the, the domain of the thing, but not the range, right? It's still above, so it's still all the y values here are, are still uh, positive, but it has changed so that the the x values are, are negative the whole way across, right? That's changed the domain from x is it's still gonna it's still gonna have an endpoint at zero, but it's now gonna be less than or equal to zero, not greater than or equal to zero. And the range is gonna be y is still greater than or equal to zero, it hasn't changed, right? So that that b value it makes sense. It's a horizontal change. It's inside the function. The fact that this is a negative number in here these now need to be negative in order to make this a positive inside there when you multiply them, right? You have a negative, you need another negative to multiply to get a positive. That's why these are all on this side. All right, so let's get rid of that writing. We'll go back to this. Let's then uh, go back to uh, this side, and then we'll change some of the other things. We're going to change the h value now and see what happens. When you slide this h value one way or the other, okay, it is going to definitely change one of the two things is going to change the domain, right? Let's say I put it there. It's going to change that domain, right? Because the domain is now going to be, it's going to have that endpoint at 5. It's still going to be greater than or equal to. It's going to be greater than or equal to 5 this time. And then, of course, the range is unchanged. It's still y is greater than or equal to 0. Right? So let's go back to this. Now, this actually, before we stop talking about h here, you know, if you went to that side, of course, it would change change that point this way, but it always is going to be to the right unless you have some kind of reflection, right? The reflection changes that inequality sign. The h value is going to change the, the end point. If we change this k value, same story. Still, graph is going up, but it's from a different point there. So if we're down at negative 2 here now, and you want to look at what happened here, this has changed the, the range, right? The range is y is greater than or equal to negative 2, the domain is still x is greater than or equal to zero. All right. So there's those parameters and how they how they change things. Well, let's do a bit of a summary here. Go back to this page and think about what we just looked at. When we did a vertical stretch, okay, the, we made the a value to some other positive. Okay, some other positive value, change A. So we took the A value and made it some positive value. Was the domain affected? No, it still went off to the right. And was the range affected? No, it still went up from zero. And then we looked at what happens when we did a vertical reflection. That was when we made that A value negative. That was the one that changed the range, right? Because the yeah, <laughs> yes. That was the one that changed the range and made it reflect down so all the y values are now negative instead of positive, right? All the results that you got. But the domain was unaffected. And then we did the same thing horizontally. So we looked at a horizontal stretch and that was when our b value... First of all, we looked at what happened when you made it positive. When you made it positive, there was no change to the domain in the range. But what happened when we did the reflection, horizontal reflection? That was when the b value, we made it negative inside that function. That one affected the domain. It reflected the domain so that it was you know, going to the left instead of the right. So it was less than instead of greater than. But it didn't change the range. And then the last two, I guess we did the horizontal translation. Next, and we change that h value to something, right? Positive or negative, didn't matter, right? And that was the thing that affected the domain, right? Because it's a, 
it's a change horizontally, it's going to affect the domain. And it didn't affect the range at all. And then lastly, we looked at the vertical translation. And that was that K value on the end. Whether we made it positive or negative, it affected the range, not the domain. Now hopefully that makes some sense. When we had these uh, changes to the range, they only happened when we had something, you know, a vertical change, right? A horizontal change doesn't affect the range. And then there was that one case where you had no change at all, right? The, the stretch here, vertical stretch, that was both no's, right? And then you had the change to the domain, and that was when we had some horizontal changes. But we had also the same situation here where this horizontal stretch didn't change anything. And then while we were looking at those things, we found that the reflections changed the inequality sign, the direction of the inequality sign, from greater than to less than or vice versa. And the translations were the things that changed the actual value, the end point of that graph, but not the inequality sign. All right. Now, just before we wrap it up here, let's look at a couple specific graphs and just make a couple last connections here. So there's a graph and a, and a radical corresponding radical equation. This obviously, if you're looking at what the domain and the range are here, the domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And the range is y is less than or equal to 0. Now let's think about which things change each of those aspects here. This negative 4 has to do with the fact that this is shifted 4 to the left, right? That horizontal translation affects that value. Since it has not been horizontally reflected, it's still greater than, right? Because it goes that way. But if we're looking at the, the vertical stuff here, uh, the fact that this is less than or equal to instead of greater than has to do with this, that reflection, right? That reflection is what causes it to uh, go down to the right rather than up to the right. And then this this 2 in here, that vertical uh, stretch factor, doesn't affect the domain and the range at all. all. right? One other example here to look at. There's another radical function, graph and equation. It has a domain of x is less than or equal to 0. It has a range of y is greater than or equal to, it looks like, 3 here. The things that affect that. The fact that this is less than has to do with that that reflection, right? That horizontal reflection. It's flipped over that way, so that changes that inequality sign. And this value is unaffected because there's no shift, right? There's no shift horizontally there. And then this 5 inside there, that doesn't affect anything. It, doesn't, it affects the shape of the graph, but it doesn't affect the domain and the range. And vertically, we have... Uh, we have this 3 here, that's because it's been shifted up 3. But it hasn't been reflected, so that's still greater than or equal to, right? Because the values are all up from 3, not down from 3, right? If it was to get reflected, well, then that would open down, and then that thing would have to change. All right? So that's it. That's looking at how the domain and the range of a radical function that's been transformed are affected by those transformations.